Hey, brand builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this interview. As always, it's our honor to provide it to you for free and wanted to let you know there's no big sales pitch or anything coming uh, at the end. However, if you are someone who is looking to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you and get to know you a little bit and hear about some of your dreams and visions and share with you a little bit about what we're up to to see if we might be a fit. So if you're interested in a free strategy call with someone from our team, we would love to hear from you. You can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall, brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall. We hope to talk to you soon. We love Stephen Scoggins. We love him for a number of reasons, um, mostly just out of a pure respect and genuine admiration for his heart and his desire to serve. But we also very much admire what he has done. Um, he is a serial entrepreneur, not just a, a personal brand, but he has several other businesses uh, in homes and siding and all sorts of real estate and different things that he does. And he's a he's a true entrepreneur. And there's not really another term other than serial entrepreneur that describes him. But our lives intersected with his a handful of years ago. Um, and since that time, he's become a best selling author. He's a podcast host. Uh, his his thought leadership has been featured in major media outlets. I mean, several of the big ones, Forbes, Entrepreneur, Thrive Global, NBC, ABC, um, several others. He's been on uh, our pal John Lee Dumas' podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire. And so basically, Stephen has helped Fortune 500 leaders, professional athletes, entertainers, pretty much anyone with a dream. Um with a with a plan and a set of principles to help them exceed their wildest expectations for all that life has to offer and so he offers education and inspiration and encouragement for anyone looking to make their dreams a reality and we also have a very unique relationship with steven uh from a professional standpoint that he was a client uh, is a client, is still an active client who became one of our strategists at Brand Builders Group. So he is also certified in teaching stuff at Brand Builders. And then he is also one of our brand implementation partners where he does execution for some of our clients, which we don't do internally. And so we refer that out to him. And so I think he's like one of the only people ever that we've had that relationship. And anyways, that's that's a lot, but there's there's a lot to you, brother. So welcome to the show, <laughs> dude. It's my pleasure. No, I was gonna, I was fixing to say, did I get kicked out of the group? I, I got fired as a client. Or <laughs> fired as a client. No, man, I, I love you guys. You guys have been a, a, a major influence and a major impactor in my own personal brand, and and we're changing lives because of it. So I'm I'm grateful to you guys, big time. Yeah, well, thank you for that. And our, our team loves you, and and you know AJ loves you, and uh, AJ doesn't love everybody. But um, <laughs> she when once she finds someone that is like truly authentic and all about integrity and doing the right thing, like she latches on. And and you know I, I want to talk about how you've built your personal brand as an entrepreneur, like in addition to being an entrepreneur. Um, because I think, you know, a lot of our clients kind of set on the path to go, I'm going to be a coach, a consultant, you know, whatever thought leader expert, and they do that, or they're in professional services and they're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to accelerate myself as an accountant or they're an executive, you know, kind of, you know, on the path of trying to get promoted or you know, maybe mm -hmm. just create more visibility for their company. But you're an entrepreneur who has quote unquote, real businesses, like businesses <laughs> separate of per and not team personal <laughs> and team members yeah. and employees. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, let's start with that. How many employees do you have? And give us like, give us a, a bit of a sense of the scope of your non personal brand businesses. Yeah. So I think the easiest way to do that is to basically say that uh, I've been at this game for almost 22 years. I started my first business, uh, CHE, where it's known as Custom Home Exteriors, my siding business. Not super sexy, unless you need siding on your house, then it's super sexy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, you guys, like your house that you just, you did was yeah. just awesome. Like you guys do some awesome stuff. Oh, thanks, man. No, you know, it's, um, you know, I started that company sleeping in a car roughly 22 years ago. Um, wow. I grew up, but grew up in a very difficult situation growing up. I um, was very fortunate to have a mentor that believed in me when I didn't believe in myself or kind of got me going, began to kind of change my mindset a little bit. 
and then quickly grew that business. Well, I say quickly, 20 years. It took me 20 plus years to get that company to be self-sufficient where, you know, I could spend time with you today and kind of share and whatnot and focus on some other business endeavors. Uh, but that company is now in three states. I employ about 400 people uh, company-wide uh, on, that, on that side of things. And we do, with that one business, do really high eight figures in revenue uh, in that one business, which wow. then led me to real estate, which then led me to other things. And then, you know, I, I discovered that when I would get up and share my heart, um, at, you know, HBA functions, which is, you know, homeowners associations, not, you know, again, not super sexy to the, to the average listener, but it was, you know, it was my industry, right. They would be really drawn in by the simple fact that I had this, this story of overcoming. And then as that resonated, they would come up to me and say, Hey, you know, I, my, my son is really having a difficult time. If I got him on a speakerphone, would you call, would you talk to him? I'd say, yeah, sure. Absolutely. And then over the course of 20 or 30 minutes, you know, you would hear tears, you would hear laughter, and then that person would then exhibit change. And then, you know, that, that word began to get out a little bit more. And I, know I was joking around with you before we hopped on air, but, you know, our, our friend John Acuff, I just told him recently that uh, it's all his fault that I even got on this journey because I went, my friends and family would say, hey, you should write a book, you should write a book, you should write a book. Now I'm an ADHD dyslexic kid, right? Writing a book was not something I was considering or <laughs> about, right? And, um, you know, and then I remember him sitting down we were, we were at an event together, uh, and we were going through some things and he was, and I was like, man, I've been people telling me to write a book. He's like, I don't know, man, it's really hard. You got editing, you got pillar, you know, what, what we, we call it brand builders group. What you taught us is pillar is, points, you know, pillar points yep. mm -hmm. right. Which I had knew nothing about at that time. And, you know, and all these different things. And he said, I tell you what, just tell me one of the stories. And, you know, I, and I proceeded to tell him the, the story of me, uh, you know, attempting to become a Navy SEAL and, and how that almost led to my suicide attempt and some other just just some very difficult things and kind of the transitions. And lo and behold, he runs out the door because he was 30 minutes late for another meeting, slaps the wall and says, you should totally write a book. <laughs> and dude, within seven months, I met you for the first time uh, when you guys were training us on Infusionsoft. And that's how our friendship began. Yeah, I mean, what a story. I mean, just to yeah, you breeze through a lot of those things, but you were sleeping in a car, like living in a car, started a business that now has 400 employees, high eight figures. Uh, you know, you've turned that into generational wealth through real estate. Mm -hmm. And this is after being ADHD and dyslexic and, uh, you know, for a moment being suicidal in your life. Also, your wife, uh, your fa your personal yeah. life, you've, you, you, you've had a number of health issues that you guys have mm -hmm. had to to navigate. Yeah. Um, and so I guess, why did you decide to start a personal brand? I mean, you kind of started to touch on it there. It sounds like it was really about the impact mm -hmm. because you clearly you, 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 yeah. you have the money. The other thing that you didn't say is that you, you recently bought a building or, or you, well, you have, you have <laughs> yeah. several buildings, but you just bought a, a commercial, live center, another, yep. uh, a live event center. Um, is it is part of is part of what we'll talk about later but but also there's a church that operates out of there on the weekends right and mm -hmm. like you got all this yeah. stuff going on and then you decide i need to i need to build a personal brand why mm -hmm. can can i be honest with you i was one of the last person. I actually prefer when people brand. lie and tell us the tell <laughs> us the, the, the fake, dishonest, inauthentic yeah. story. Um, uh, but if that, if you'd rather no, just tell us the real story, that's cool too. Awesome, awesome. Well, the real story is, um, I didn't want to build a personal brand. I didn't. I have fought against ah. it for the last five years. Um, you know, Casey, who was, who was with the team, you're one of your senior strategists that flew here to work with me specifically. She probably spent the first entire day of phase one. Like, dude, you've got to be the personal brand. You can't just focus. You can't just let the, like, it's all connected together. And it took me a long time. And then a buddy of mine asked me a very interesting question. He said, Stephen, I don't think it's about whether or not you want to be a personal brand or whether or not it should be a business entity or whatever. He goes, I think the question you're really trying to solve is, am I worthy of having a voice? Whoa. And I started to cry, man. He goes, Stephen, you've, you've overcome, you know, suicide, depression, anxiety, uh, dyslexia, ADHD, homelessness. You've built a major organization. You have all these different team members that you, that you pour into consistently on a weekly basis. He goes, dude, you're worthy of having a voice and people gravitate to you because people hope and want more. And it dawned on me to answer your question, Rory, that 
my first mentor, Steve Mark, that gave me the second chance. He's my father's employer. You know, I want to be Steve Mark to somebody else. I want to, I want to be able to give hope and inspiration and a framework and a process and a, and a learning method. And if you look at all the businesses that I own, all of them, you know, from the real estate side to the construction side, to the thought leadership side, to the now the live event side, all of them have one thing in common, all of them. They're all trying to make people better than they were yesterday. Hmm. All of them. So I think at the end of the day, the reason I do what I do is not because of money, not because of wealth, not because of things. It's because I want to be someone who creates a legacy that outlives myself. And the only way I can do that is by making an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's power. Am I, uh, am I worthy enough to have a voice? What an astute observation from your friend, because that's really the issue. And you know what's so cool about that is going... It's not about whether or not you're worthy. It's about mm -hmm. whether or not other people out there can benefit from what you know. And when you mm -hmm. shift to that conversation, the legacy, you know, conversation, and uh, I know Journey Principles was part of, part of your your first book mm -hmm. and part of what your yeah. courses and, and stuff are about is when you make that shift off of yourself onto mm -hmm. other people, then it's all about making people better than they were yesterday. It's not about making Steven famous or liked or popular, lots of followers. It's about making people better than they were yesterday. I, I love that. So that makes sense to me. Uh, and mm -hmm. also let that, you know, be a lesson for all of us that it's like, there's not really amount of money that will ever satisfy you. It's it, we ultimately are all drawn to that impact, which is something mm -hmm. you can do now with, with little to no money, but you have built a personal brand very quickly. Um, uh, your Instagram, like you, you went, you, you basically grew to a hundred thousand followers on Instagram mm -hmm. in like the last 12 months. I know that you guys uh, just crossed 2 million views or you just Ooh, recently crossed 2 million views on YouTube. Um, you know, you're, uh, I, I had a conversation with a very famous seminar promoter, uh, Peter mm -hmm. Lowe, which he yeah. used to promote Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar used to speak yeah. at his events. And then it was like, oh, Stephen Scoggins is speaking at my event. And I was like, what? Like, this is amazing. Like, you're growing so fast. So how have you built a personal brand quickly. I mean, you, you, mm -hmm. this has happened fast or maybe it hasn't. Well, I think it is, you know, if, if for, for me, it doesn't feel very fast. Right. Cause you know, it's, it's like you know, that whole bamboo thing where you're underground, you're underground, you're underground, you're underground. And all of a sudden you start to bust through the ground. I was like, Hey, this guy came out of nowhere. Uh -huh. You know, I, I think I actually owe a lot of credit to brand builders group, just being straight up honest. And here's why, when I first went out to go create my first personal brand, um, you know, I tried to mimic all the people that I know and respected. You know, I, I had a, a an acquaintance style relationship with Dave Ramsey and knew Lou Maxwell a little bit and, and all these different people early on. And I was like, well, I'm just going to do what they do. Right. I'm going to copy what they copy. And then I and then I realized there's this um, this veil, if you will, of stuff that you can see. And there's also this this hard work that goes in behind the scenes, you know, and. As a result, I started focusing on, well, how do I get through here to here so I can get the information I need to, you know, to then level up? And what I ran into was my lack of clarity was causing a lack of connection. Hmm. So my striving to try to mimic everything that I saw was pushing me away from my authentic self. And what brand builders, one of the things that brand builders did for me is they helped me get crystal clear crystal clear on what it is that I am here to serve, who I am, who I'm called to serve, what I'm supposed to be doing. And once I did that, I began to say things differently. I began to write things differently. I began to do things differently on camera. And as a result, I think that's a direct reflection of your authentic self is ultimately your connected self, meaning that's the self that people are going to connect to. You know, I, for the last, you know, my team's been on my high knee for the last year about doing more Instagram stories and live. I'm like, dude, do really people care that I get up at 5 a.m.? I pour myself some pre-workout and I head to the gym. And they're like, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's no way. They're like, try it. I'm like, fine. So I've been getting up and screenshotting my phone and whatever and doing my stories and heading off to the gym. And lo and behold, people identify with it. And it blew my mind. And what I realized was, People are looking for a beacon of inspiration so they can take a chance on themselves. And I think that's at the core of what's caused the rapid growth, but I could not have done it 
without the clarity that was forged through brand builders groups processes. And that's just the truth. Say that, say that again. People are looking for a beacon of inspiration to prove to them that they can do it themselves. Hmm. Uh, that is so powerful. The, the other thing you said a little bit ago was you said my lack of clarity was causing a lack of connection. Mm -hmm. And then you follow that up with, you said my striving, something about my striving to be like other people was preventing mm -hmm. me from. Yeah. So my, my striving to be like other people, right? So the mimicking of other people, I'm mimicking uh, Ramsey's organization. So my first live event that I would try to put on was like a, not, it wasn't entree leadership, but it had elements of like what I learned from entree leadership, not, not the content. Cause I know I don't steal content from anybody, but like the, the flow, the feeling kind of thing. Right. Uh -huh. Well, I wasn't being authentic to myself. So when we went to go do it the first time, and this is a few years back, you know, I, I didn't intentionally do some key things that are in our live events now that are uniquely us. Right. I tried to say things how Ramsey would say, well, that Dave's Dave, like I'm bold, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not Dave's Dave. Right. The more I tried to be like Dave or the more I tried to be like John or the more I tried to be like uh, or uh, Acuff or gosh, any of the people that are in this industry, the more I diluted myself and the more I diluted myself, the more I broke connection with the audience that I was ultimately called to serve. And that dilution process, that disconnection, that um, that unintentional focus on being connected was a major shift with me when I began studying all the content of brand builders, which is another reason why I, I was like, AJ, I, Rory, I, let, let me help, man. I've got, you know, I've got a window of time. Let me, let me help. I, I got to help other mission driven messengers make it to make it to the market. Like all of these things I learned from you guys, you know? So when you say, how did your brand grow so rapidly? Well, brand builders was the first step for me. Otherwise I was like shooting a shotgun when I should be sh shooting a sniper rifle. Mm. You guys helped me aim the scope. Yeah, I love that. And, and you know, I, I like to think that we pay our strategists very well, you, you know, like it, it, they, they, they make about a hundred bucks an, an hour, like, uh, which is annualized as, I don't know, some, some six figure number. And, um, and yet when I look at how much you make on an hour, I'm like, this makes no financial sense <laughs> for you whatsoever to be a, to be a brand builders strategist. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that, again, as part of why we were drawn to you is this like it wasn't a financial calculation mm -hmm. for you. It was a give back. It was mm -hmm. a give back of going. You know, I've never actually heard you say this about that, that, that th the, the clarity that you got mm -hmm. from our process, because I didn't work with you directly. You worked with yeah. KC, you worked with our team, you worked with AJ. You and I haven't had all that many touch points as a client. You and I have been more friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's. That is so, so powerful. So I want to, uh, so those are some of the things that's so huge. I mean, that, that part about um, the more I strive to be like other people, the more I diluted myself and the more mm -hmm. disconnection I created with my audience. I mean, that is really profound um, and totally true. And so that speaks to what we believe in and teach and promote. And you're, you're a great living example of the success that comes when someone becomes more of who they are. Um, but there's been a lot of frustrating parts of building mm -hmm. your personal brand as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear about that, you know, all sides included. And, and that was originally yeah. how we met you was we were specifically helping you with building your, your Infusionsoft application, which is now called Keep, because that's, that's one of the things that we do mm -hmm. really, really well. It's an a, a extraordinary internal competency of ours. Um, so what are some of the, the, the most frustrating parts? Because you've built a lot of these businesses. You're used to handling problems um, mm -hmm. and challenges, but there's been some unique ones, I feel like, in the, in the journey of personal branding that even if you've built other companies before, um, I mean, obviously clarity is one of them, but, mm -hmm. but I, I'm talking more about the mechanics of building yeah. a personal brand. What about that has been frustrating or difficult compared to maybe like other stuff that you've done? Well, gosh, uh, there's a bunch. Uh, you know, the first one that comes to mind is this problem of creating enough content with the limited mm -hmm. time that I have. And that was long before I understood the content diamond. That's made things so much easier. 
um, so much easier. But so that's that's a huge one. The, the second one content, is content. Being... Content diamond, y'all, is it? In, we're we're using a little <laughs> bit of in, internal yeah. speak that our our customers and stuff understand. But the content diamond is a is the the process that we teach clients for taking basically one video and disassembling it into repurposing that all across the web, and it fills mm-hmm. one five minute video fills your entire content calendar on every on every online platform throughout the week and your team does all of it. And it's like, basically you do it for five minutes and you're done and you're everywhere online. Um, so, uh, so anyway, sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but I, I want to make sure all. we don't have too, too much internal jargon, but, um, so that's cool. So content diamond, what else? Yeah. Well, I think the other thing too, is, you know, when you, when you step out to begin to build your personal brand, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with, uh, doing, doing what you can with what you have. Like I'm a, I'm a big bootstrap guy, clearly, right? Mm-hmm. Every, every business I've gotten that have bootstrapped it kind of scenario. And as a result, I learned the hard way that there comes a point in time where you can't do things by yourself, meaning you can't uh, necessarily go out and hire all these various subcontractors all over the place and expect them to know your brand to the essence that you know it yourself and expect mm-hmm. them to have consistency across your brand with them. So for example, I had three different website providers, all of them, none of them worked out. I had four different media companies that I tried to partner with to do personal branding, you know, for myself to try to create visual assets and things that I had. Um, the, the one biggest problem I had, especially and in trying to cut through the clutter as becoming a speaker specifically was I had this essence of not being able to get the speaker footage I need to create the demo reel that I needed to then sell me more speaker footage. Uh-huh. Right. So, so it was like this, okay, well, I'm a speaker. I know I can speak. Like I've, I've been working on this craft and working on it and I'll continue to work on it the rest of my life. But you know, I've been doing it, but I can't really showcase it and I can't showcase it because I don't have an audience. And when I do have an audience, you know, it might be a couple hundred people and there's no cameras around there or the, the there's cameras around, but the lighting sucks. Or if the lighting sucks, the mic sucks, you know, and it's just like this combination of problematic behaviors or problematic consistency that comes from a, a strong visual identity. You know, so when you asked earlier, you know, what do you attribute some of the success of recent success of some of your growth to, you know, on top of the clarity, it's going to be coming down to consistency. Right. Mm-hmm. We started doing some things in house. Um, I started, I got so frightened. And I don't recommend this for everybody. I got so frustrated. Right. I just started investing and in building out a building out an organization myself to make it work. <laughs> you, <laughs> I mean, couldn't find, you couldn't find uh, reliable vendors to do this stuff. So you're like, mm-hmm. damn it, I'm just going to buy them. I'm just going to hire. Exactly. I'm just going to build my own. I'm going to build a company. I'm going to hire them. And, and, and I'm going to have their full time attention basically and make sure that they care about my brand. And, you're at, you're in a very rare and unique <laughs> position to be able to do that. Like, hey, let's buy a building. Let's buy. I mean, you bought some LED screens that were mm-hmm. what a quarter million dollars. Oh yeah, I mean, I've got I've got a half million bucks in the stage alone. Yeah, so you bought it. You bought it. You actually bought an auditorium. Like you mm-hmm. bought a venue, built out an auditorium. I mean, you, uh, we, we were there recently and it was like, mm-hmm. I, I want to say it was, it was like a six camera shoot. So that means you buy mm-hmm. six cameras, all the switchers, all the lighting, uh, these beautiful, I mean, those LED, these LED screens are just huge and you know, all the chairs and yada, yada, mm-hmm. yada. So you got, you bought a half million dollar venue. You dumped a half million dollars just into the venue piece alone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and it's interesting. This is an interesting point to me. And, and one of the things that we realized at Brand Builders Group, because um, about a, maybe 18 months ago, we started dipping our toe into the idea of helping with the execution for our clients, of actually mm-hmm. doing the stuff for them. And what we found is there's so much we couldn't, we can't keep up yeah. with it. And that yeah. our real, our real uniqueness is, is personal brand strategy. It is sitting mm-hmm we're like the CMO for a personal brand. We yeah. guide the overall big picture and we know the right things that need to happen in the right sequence, you know, in the right way. Um, but we don't have the, we don't have, I mean, we don't have a building. We don't have yeah. hundreds of employees. We don't have um, a lot of these things. And so, but we noticed both for ourselves, we've had this same story our entire career. 
can't mm-hmm. get a reliable yes. web designer, can't get a consistent graphic designer. They ghost you. They're they're outrageously expensive. They build something with in in some stupid code language that nobody else on the planet Earth <laughs> understands. Yes. Yeah. Um, you and and uh, you know they like you're saying with the event production. Mm-hmm. Either the lighting is bad or the mm-hmm. they don't know the video angles that you need or the microphone yeah. sucks or this the the slides look weird yeah. in the background. Uh, um, and there's so many X factors. And so we started, for those of you that don't know, um, what we did was we deliberately got out of the execution business at Brand Builders Group. And we said, no, mm-hmm. our real magic is, is specialty and, sh- and specialty is strategy. It's helping people yeah. get clear on who they are, what mm-hmm. they can do that no one else can do, and and the high level orchestration of all of the vast amount of moving parts, and then we created a vendor network. And I mentioned this earlier in your bio. Mm-hmm. I said that that Stephen has become, which was never part of the vision for either of us, one of our vendor partners because we have we realized we have to build a network. So even though we can't do the execution, we're not staffed at the level we need to support our hundreds and hundreds of clients, we have to find partners to help them do certain things. And so that's how we solve the problem for our clients. Even though we can't do it ourselves, we created, okay, here's basically our trusted vendor partner network. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest challenges is the speaking footage. Like you, Mm -hmm. you, you talk to it's, it is impossible to get on a stage unless you have proven footage. Even TEDx now wants you to have a some kind of footage of you speaking just to get a it's TEDx such a, done. It's such a chicken in the egg thing. It's like, yeah, I need to, I need to have a video. I need to have a, a demo video of me speaking in order for someone to book me to speak. Mm-hmm. But I have to get booked to speak to get enough footage that mm-hmm. I need to put together a demo video. It is, it's like the ultimate frustrating. <laughs> most painful this yes. is how do you get around this until you solve this one thing your speaking career is zero like you yeah you can't yeah you, you can't, can't do it. it i mean I, I mean until i started getting some demo reels and some sizzle reels and and speaking footage i mean i think i, I took as many free speaking events as i could get my hands on earlier um went from that to getting one demo reel was able to go from zero to almost 2500 bucks in one shot Mm. Got a updated version, did some other speaking footage because I, you know, obviously I host my own live events here um, that we do for my brand. Um, and as a result, you know, very quickly. Which again, I just want to say is really unfair. It is really <laughs> unfair that you just bought a building and like built all this out, but um, you're doing something really special with it, which we're going to talk about here in just a yeah. second. Um, but yeah, so so anyway, so you 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 reinvested. And you mm-hmm. upgraded because that's how I did it too. Was I went yeah. and spoke 304 times for free. But mm-hmm. here's something I noticed, Stephen. Events that you speak at that you have to speak at for free, they usually mm-hmm. don't have a lot of high production value <laughs> no, to no, the stage. <laughs> it's not as a camera shoot. It's not yeah. LED screens. It's not up lighting and, and multiple angles. Yeah. And it, it's usually, I mean, it's like the back of a Birkin's restaurant. I mean, that yeah, was you, my career. Yeah. You haven't even seen the new elation lighting we just put in. I don't even know yeah. what elation lighting is, but it sounds really cool and awesome it's, and expensive. It is, <laughs> I, it, I, it is on all, all those points. <laughs> um, so, so this is a big problem. Getting this mm-hmm. this demo yeah. video footage, it is one of the number one problems I faced in my career. Uh, mm-hmm. When AJ, uh, you know, in our former life, AJ built a speakers bureau. Not everybody knows this. One of the one of the businesses that we sold as part of a, you know, our roll up of the last company that we sold, there was a speakers bureau inside of that that AJ built from scratch. One oh, of the wow. biggest problems she always had was getting her her younger speakers new video footage. And we, yeah. it, hard to get the new the newest the newest speakers are the hardest to get booked just because nobody knows who they are and you can't prove that you're good because mm-hmm. no one can see you because of this whole chicken and the egg thing. Um, and so there used to be a company that did this, mm-hmm. that they, uh, t- tell us about this company. Cause you actually hired them. There was a company yep. that, that did this thing where they, they put on an event and mm-hmm. speakers could come and you, they, they had people from the public or how, how did it, how did it work? Like I never was a customer, but we, many of our brand builders group customers, including you were yeah. a customer. So yeah. like, 
what was the what was the concept of this of this company? Yeah, so you know, it was a the original plan for the event was for to solve the chicken and the egg problem we've been talking about for the last couple of minutes, and that was to get aspiring speakers the video the video keynote footage they need, you know. So you would do do a very short keynote, five to seven minutes or something like that. Um, and as a result, you would get the speaker footage you need. They had people in the audience that were live event attendees. Some of them were speakers like myself because you're, you're watching the other speakers as well. And then you would sit down and you would also have other folks in the audience. And those folks would go, as soon as you're done, go do your testimonials. So you had an arc of, you had a basket of testimonials from your speaking that you could use. And Amazing. then that company would then- To cut then right create. into your demo video. So exactly. other people say how awesome you are. And it was so inspiring or funny or yeah. whatever. Exactly. And then, you know, and then, so you had, you know, basically you'd up with three products, so a testimonial, a speaker demo reel and a keynote footage. Mm -hmm. However, it wasn't. Now, it was now a, hold on. No, but yeah. the, the, it was also in front of a, a real life audience. Yes. It wasn't a fake. That, that was the thing that always got me was, and I've, I've, I have done this several times yeah. in my career where I will record early versions of my demo video in a room yeah. where no one is actually in the room except me. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, that's the only thing I could think yeah. to do to create a video, a demo to get video footage if I couldn't get in front of a live audience. And so, you know, mm -hmm. I either would like, um, you know, borrow a room or whatever and go speak somewhere and you just record it. Yeah. But this was an, this is a real life audience. So they invited, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously all the speakers were there at this, but then yeah. they, they open it up to the public and people come. Yeah, they have like, like an, they have like an outreach. They, they kind of do like an outreach and, you know, so in, in doing so, I befriended the owner, the, the original creator of that program, uh, really, really well. And it just so happens uh, he decided to come to my venue and shoot a video in the studio I'm actually in right now uh, doing a we have the class whiteboard thing that we can do like neon markers. And you know, I said, man, you know, hey, ha, you know, how things going? When's the, when's the next event? And he's like, man, I, I had to shut it down. I'm like, well, why? Like, well, you know, COVID. I'm like, well, dude, you, you know, if you need some help, get back on your feet. I'd, I'd be glad to help you with that. He goes, man, I've, I've, I've had to pivot my entire business away mm -hmm. from it. And he gave me like three key factors um, that I don't have permission to share. Um, but the dude had a huge heart. And he said the number one driving factor preventing him from like relaunching that is simply the, uh, the cost of actually putting on a live event. And I got to talking to him. I said, well, I said, dude, I'm standing in a live event center. What if, what about using my place? Like, like I won't you charge have, you. you have yeah. it. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I'll, I'll, I won't charge you a thing. Just like, let's go. Right. And he said, man, he said, I, I'd love to, but you know, I've already launched this other thing. I'm going to focus my attention over here. I said, well, dude, this is a major problem. Like I, you know, that's the reason I came to you in the first place. This is a major problem for a lot of people. In our and space, just, this is a huge exactly, deal. And it just, exactly. And I just happened to be doing a, a live event. AJ was actually teaching it. Um, I briefly covered that little conversation with AJ and AJ and I was like, I, you know, I've got this event. She's like, dude, so many of my, our clients need like this, you know? Right. And then, so, so we went from like just really brainstorming really fast. And then um, a good friend of mine, Evan Carmichael, who's been really helping us on, on uh, with, with a lot of our YouTube stuff specifically. Yeah. Um, he said, he goes, man, I know people that need that. And then I know people that need that. And then I know people that need that. And I'm like, well, the, the building sits, you know, the auditorium sits empty half of the week. Right. It's only there for Steven to shoot his videos and nobody else is. <laughs> it's just empty <laughs> it seemed kind of selfish during, yeah. during the week. Yeah. And so, so, so anyways, the short of this is you said, I've got the space, I've mm -hmm. got the capacity, I've got the team. The other thing that you have, which is really unique is it's when you have 400 employees, it's actually quite easy to assemble a real life audience. Yeah. Uh, because you <laughs> sure go, is. Hey, guess what? Hey it's guys, free training today. Free training yeah, today. <laughs> it's personal development day. <laughs> Everyone funnel into the auditorium. Yeah. And um, so, so, so what happened? He basically just said, take this just, business and do it. I was like, just go uh, for it. I, yeah. I mean, I called him right back after AJ and I had a quick conversation and I was like, dude, can I, are you cool if I do this? He said, man, it would mean a lot to me if you actually ran with it, to be honest. He said, I always felt bad the fact that I had to close it. And I said, well, dude, I got you. If any point in time you want to re-engage, just let me know. And, and, and then that's how it started and ended. And as Amazing. a result, we began thinking, okay, well, how do we take – now, this is going to sound kind of weird given the fact that we haven't really told everybody about what's going on. But um, I said, oh, how do we take that event and amplify it? Like that was mm -hmm. like the question that we were having at our, at our little team meeting. Like what, so how, do, how could you, if you're going to take it over, how do you up level it? Like, how do you exactly. this, make this even more valuable? Like, you know, what, what could you do to make it better? Sure. Yes. 
So I asked AJ, I said, Hey, Jay, I'm just curious. What are, what are all the things that you think? Um, and sorry, know, just to clarify, when he says yeah. AJ, he's talking about our AJ, my AJ, AJ, the CEO yeah, of Brand Builders <laughs> Group and the, and, uh, the woman I sleep with, right? Uh, my <laughs> wife, like, uh, she's my business partner. This is our, so he's using AJ because again, it's, it, you know, he, he's one of our team members, but it's our AJ that you hear do the recaps. So you two are having a conversation, by the yep. way, completely unbeknownst to me strategizing <laughs> and scheming and planning <laughs> and never did either of you think, Hey, we should talk to Rory about this. Uh, you guys, you guys plotted this whole thing and then told me, Hey, this is what we're doing. <laughs> by the way, by the way, you're flying to Raleigh. <laughs> <I'm> yeah. Just, <laughs> uh -huh. no, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was one of the situations where I was like, what, what, do, what do brands need? And she just rattled off just off the top of her head, a sales letter, demo video, mini courses, webinar sequences, um, all these different uh, photography. Da, 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 da. I said, we can do all of that here. Like all of it. I have, you know, quite a bit of income invested in rhino sliders and, and jibs and gimbals and all these different camera devices. Booms. And, these are all equipment yeah. jargon terms he's using for fancy equipment stuff. And not only do you have the live event center, which is, that's probably the hardest, the hardest thing to recreate is that beautiful stage live event mm -hmm. experience. It's like, even if you want to do it, it takes so much money. Like, like this guy was saying, he, it was mm -hmm. his full-time business and you can yeah. barely, barely do it because it's expensive. But then you also have the, the podcast studio, by the way, I know this because I went there. Um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you about my personal experience here in just a second, but, but the podcast studio that you're sitting in right now, you can see that uh, mm -hmm. if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see or go watch on our YouTube channel. You'll see this, the beautiful lighting is soundproof studio. That's there. You've got mm -hmm. like what, four or five different there's, like there's office five setups, whiteboards. Yeah, there's all right. So in this one room, so this is the magic of camera, right? If everybody's watching from home or on YouTube or whatever, they're going to say, well, he's in a podcast studio because they see all the podcasting equipment. Okay. What they don't right. know is over to my left-hand side is another set. Over to my caddy corner is another set. Over there against the walls, another set. And in three other rooms, I've got other sets, and I'm building two more sets. Uh-huh. And by the way, if you're listening, if you go to brandbuildersgroup.com forward slash brand amplifiers, we took a video of this. So there's a video of all these different sets and layouts that you can that you can, you can see. Uh, and that's, you know, part of, part of what we're, we're, we, we did is we went on site to uh, understand exactly what Scoggins is going right. on here. Yeah. We, and, and we, we, we became clients. We went through the whole process ourselves personally. Um, but one of the things that we did was we got a video of all these different sets so that you can see. Um, and when we also recorded a video course, cause that's another thing that we teach all of our clients is, Hey, mm -hmm. you need to build a video funnel, something that is just like a, a mini video course that you give away for free, that adds value. That is kind of your first introduction to people. And so me and Elizabeth Stevens, mm -hmm. uh, our, you know, our director of events, and then Jeremy Weber, um, we went and we filmed, uh, we did, we did the, we did the full experience. We, I, I, I recorded a keynote, a new keynote mm -hmm. that I've been working in on in front of my team, yeah. in front of your team, personal <laughs> development day, uh, with, with Rory Vaden, which, you know, which they love by the way, they uh huh. That, which, which they were forced to be at on, uh, against their <laughs> will, but I was grateful for it. They still love and it. And then, and then while we were there, so we, 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 we shot the keynote and then we shot a video course and we shot each video in a different set. Mm -hmm. And you can see that also, if you go to brandbuildersgroup.com slash brand amplifiers, you can actually see what those sets look like. And you see screenshots of, of me and, and Jeremy and Elizabeth. And then we also did a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So it was like, we were there less than a full day. Mm -hmm. uh, now in our case, how much, how much time was it? I think, I think you were four and a half hours. Yeah, now we had the whole place to ourselves. You didn't have other, <laughs> other, other clients there. But yeah. we, in four hours, shot a full video course. We shot a, a, a keynote demo video. I think I spoke on stage for like 25 minutes. 20 minutes or so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you guys produced a five-minute demo video for me, which, again, you can see this demo video if, if at uh, that URL I mentioned, brandbuildersgroup.com slash brandamplifiers. And, and one of the things that we did with this demo video, which is cool, 
is we didn't use any of my other footage. We didn't use any of my like mm -hmm. TV appearances and yada, 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 like other stuff we have. We did this as if this was the only footage I had ever had mm -hmm. so that anybody who's brand new can see what you, your team can create, even if you have zero assets before mm -hmm. a arrival and, and the actual full length, it's like a six minute demo video or five minute demo video is up, up at, the, at that URL. So sorry to interrupt. So I just thought that was a place to interject like what we did and what yeah. happened. But, but basically you've got this keynote experience, which is impossible to recreate. Mm -hmm. You've got all these video studios, which lots of people do that. They're not easily accessible, but the cool thing is if you're there, why not knock it all out mm -hmm. at once? And then the other thing was, well, again, if you're there and you're all in makeup and dressed up and hair did and like teeth whitened <laughs> and whatever, yeah. you might as well do a photo shoot. And so you you do all of this in one one shot, right? Like, mm -hmm. how does it work? Like in your words, yeah, like, so, describe it. Yeah, no, I mean, so, all right. So first of all, everybody's a little bit different on their journey. So some folks may already have Keynote, but then they may need updated uh, photo shoots for social images or for website, you know, your header bars, your transparent images. Like there's a lot of collateral. Ads, goes in. Facebook ads, like all little stuff it. like that. Yeah, lifestyle yeah. shots and mm -hmm. yada, yada. Back book covers for the back cover of your book or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, all of that. So there's there's so many different places that these assets can be deployed. Um, but one of the things that I feel is really important is that people have definitely gone through certain phases of the brand builder process. So they don't come here and waste time. They come here right. and they can knock it out. And it's super duper important, right? Um, but when it comes down to it, we're going to book off a whole week, right? We're only going to allow 20 people just because it it when you see the movement of all the people that we've got working behind cameras and sound equipment, and massive stuff like that, coordination. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a symphony. I mean, it really is. And as a result, we can only have a max of 20 people on unfortunately, you know, in a week's time frame. And so we're going to book off a week. We're going to have yeah, one you guys must have had like 20 people there just just taking care of the four of us or yes. three of us. There were three of us for four hours. And you you guys, uh, you your team, which your team was incredible. You literally oh, rolled out the red carpet for us and they were young and savvy and sharp and professional and, 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 and intelligent and service minded and catering and just helpful and, and brilliant. And it was like, I, I have been around so many different production teams mm -hmm. and this, this was probably the single best experience I've ever had oh, thanks, in man. just being directed go here, go here, go here. Now this, yeah. now this, Hey, change that tilt your head this way. Look over here. Let's get, let's move this camera. And like, I mean, it makes you feel like a celebrity. Like you guys directed from the minute we got out of the car door until the minute we left back to the airport, you guys directed this with like first class, uh, a first class experience. It was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it all comes down to treating people how I want to be treated, right? When I went through this experience, most of my major frustrations came from the fact that everything was disjointed. No one took me seriously. No one really cared about my end product that I was then trying to use to impact other people. Yep. That is a major underlying problem that we have worked really, really hard to solve. We want everybody that comes through those doors to feel like the million dollar brands that they'll soon be. Mm. That's what we want, right? Because we've learned that a healthy visual identity is to a personal brand like emotional health is to mind, a mental mindset, right? Those, you, you can't separate your visual identity from the personal brand that you are ultimately trying to become, right? And there is a time to do it yourself. There is, there's absolutely a time to do it yourself, but there's also a time to say enough's enough. I'm going to make an impact and I need the assets to get me there. Uh-huh. And that's, you know, that is true. I mean, if there is one thing that I wish I would have done sooner is I wish I would have invested sooner in high mm -hmm. quality production of, of these things we're talking about video assets, speaking, speaking real footage and photography. But frankly, you know, the more I've thought about that, cause I told you that whatever it was a couple of months ago when I was at your place or when it was like a month, yeah. a month ago or two months ago, I, what I realized, even as I said, you know what? I actually would have made this investment if I had confidence in the vendor. Mm -hmm. Like if I would have found somebody who I was like, 
these people, first of all, they care. Like first mm -hmm. and foremost, they give a crap. It's I'm not just a number. They're cranking through a system and they're only touching one little piece of my brand and they're trying to like spin me out, you know, as, as profitably and as efficiently as possible. So they have to care. Um, and then they have to be extremely conf like competent. They have to know mm -hmm. what they're doing. Uh, and then they have to be like reliable and, and mm -hmm. responsive. And that has been the experience with you, and by the way, so brand amplifiers is the name of this that we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're talking about. Uh, and we're not going to ask anybody for a credit card or anything today, <laughs> but if you, if you go to brandbuildersgroup.com slash brand amplifiers, you can read a little bit about this and, and you can see the different services that these guys offer. Um, the keto, you know, demo video experience, the video course experience, the photography, um, and you can just request a call with their team and they've got, I mean, I'll say this, I, I don't have all your prices memorized, but they're extremely reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. they are for what you get, especially, but it's like, you're getting a top tier experience, like a top, top tier experience mm -hmm. for what I would consider a very low to reasonable, uh, price range, yeah. which, you know, it costs something because you can't do all this for nothing, mm -hmm. but it's much less than what you could you could be charging. Um, the other thing is at that URL, uh, brandbuildersgroup.com slash brand amplifiers. Again, you can see this because you can because we went through the experience. So you can see uh, samples of the pictures that your photographers took. You can see the demo video that y'all produce just from that one visit. You can see mm -hmm. the video course that we knocked out in a couple hours. Um, and, and so anyways, the way that this happens for you guys is you have the venue, but you got to get all the staff there. And so it all mm -hmm. happens inside of a week. And so you're mm -hmm. saying there's, there's room for 20 people. Mm -hmm. They, they have to fly to Raleigh. So, mm -hmm. so they, they, they got to, you know, pay their expenses and, and on top of whatever they invest with you, they fly to Raleigh mm -hmm. and they are, they're there for how many, how many days? Yeah, so it depends on what product they need. The reason we coordinated ah. a, a full week is because with 20 folks, we're going to have keynote day. So we're going to do all the keynotes in one single day. But then on the other days, most people can get most of what they need done filmed within a two-day window, possibly a three-day window. Because we're going to put the keynote day in the center. That way you have time to get your mini courses, sales letters, all the photography and everything else you need. Oh, yeah, <clears> that's actually, the other thing. We didn't even talk about the sales videos. We, mm -hmm. we, we actually recorded one of those, which is also on that page. Mm -hmm. The, the brandbuildersgroup.com slash brand amplifiers at the top is, a, is an example of a sales video that we recorded. So you can see that as well. I totally forgot about that one. <laughs> That's a yeah. huge one. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, look, there's, there's so much they're going to get from a content and strategy side of things. You guys did a wonderful job in, in creating the strategy environment you got to have the assets to deploy it. You know, one of the things that common questions I used to get um, as a strategist repeatedly is how come I can't go faster? How come I can't go faster? How come I can't go faster? How come right. I can't go faster? And I'm like, take it from me. I literally wasted millions of dollars, millions of dollars in the last five years because I was unclear and I was deploying capital at a rate that was just straight up foolish. Hmm. Get clear and then put the assets together. And when you actually have those to deploy on a regular basis, Literally, you could turn on the faucet. You call it the revenue engine. You, you turn on the revenue. Right. But you, you can't scale what you don't have to sell. Right. You got to get it filmed. Yeah. So uh, one of the other things that's really awesome about this, y'all, and, and you know, we want you to at least look at it. And, and it's, it's like you said, it's, if, you're, if you're flat, flat broke and you have no choice, you might be where I was, where it's like your first demo video, you're recording in the public library in some back mm -hmm. room with a, with a camera. You, you just start there, but you, at some point you got to go, I'm going to level up mm -hmm. um, because I was embarrassed about my visual identity for years, for years in my career. I was like, I, I don't, you know, I have to do this, but I, I kind of mm -hmm. don't want anyone to see it because it, I don't think the production level matches my expertise level. Mm -hmm. And there was always this gap. Um, but you know, when you're ready to level up and go, I need to get my first true set of quality assets. And mm -hmm. I'm actually going to hire you guys to do my next full production demo video where I give you all of my assets <laughs> and we do a yeah. real one. Cause I want to see yeah. what your team can do. If we like go all in on like, 
let's create something awesome. That's going to be a project, but, um, you got to do this. I mean, it's yeah. super affordable. Uh, you knock it out all at once. You guys know mm -hmm. what you're doing. It's a real life audience. It's not a fake. It's not like a fake simulated thing. It's a, it's a real experience. You meet other speakers and personal mm -hmm. brands. And then the other thing is, you know, Steven, you mentioned this, this has basically become, even though this is not technically a brand builders group offering, this mm -hmm. has basically become a brand builders group guided experience because mm -hmm. we created some tools exclusively for this that mm -hmm. uh, are available for our clients and anybody who finds out about this, you know, even if you're not yet one of our brand builders group clients, but you, you, you think you could use Steven services. Um, if you, if you come through our, our page, brandbuildersgroup.com slash brand amplifiers, um, we will give you some tools. We have a tool called the demo video template. We also have the, the brand builders group uh, guide to photo shoots uh, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for personal brands, all the different looks that you need. And we're giving you these tools to make sure in addition to what you guys provide, anyone who comes from us that comes to you is going to be dialed in. They're going to know Amen. I'm coming to knock out this and this and this and this. Yep. I know where I'm going, what I'm doing. It's aligned with my brand positioning statement. Um, so, you know, and by the way, that, that URL that I keep mentioning, it's just a free call. So yeah. if you, if you go there, you're just going to see samples of these assets and then you request a free call with Steven's team. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is not a brand builder group offering officially, but you, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the show, because of your journey, because of our relationship with you as, as a customer, a strategist, mm -hmm. you also now through brand amplifiers have become one of our preferred vendor partners. Frankly, we don't even know anyone else. Like yeah. after 25 years of being in this business, well, how long? No, I guess more like 20 years. We've been in the business <laughs> for 20 years. I don't even know anyone else who does what you, what you guys have put together here. Yeah. I mean, it, it comes down to what did I need to get to where I'm at today? What did I learn from that experience? What are the problems that we can solve, which is something that is very clearly taught at Brand Builders. And as a result, we have tried to think through every facet of not only the experience for the personal brand that's going through the experience, but everything that they could possibly need to launch, right? You can't, you've got to launch, <clears throat> excuse me, you've got to launch. You've, you've, you've you got to get out there. Yourself, you've got to get yourself out there. And, you know, and we simply want to treat people how we want to be treated. We've kept it as close to cost as possible because I knew how expensive it was to kind of get stuff going. And it's even more expensive if stuff's disjointed. So we, we've done everything in our power to put together a, a, a process and a program that helps mission-driven messengers, man, get, get to market, right? That's mm -hmm. what you call them, mission-driven messengers. I'm happy to be mission. one of them. Yeah, absolutely. So anyways, the I hope you've gotten you know just value from this conversation in general. I mean, Stephen did this because it, it's a cautionary tale as well that you can spend so much money so fast trying to piece together different things from different places. That's why Brand Builders Group, we've created our, our um, what we call them our brand implementation partners. It's our trusted vendor network, which you're one of, um, because we just see our clients spending money left and right with people that have no idea really what they're doing. It's totally disjointed. It's, it's, it's falling down. But also going, even if it's not with, with brand amplifiers and Steven's team, at some point you have to do this. You have to, um, one of my favorite pieces of advice that I received from a mentor was a guy named Randy Gage. And he told me this early in my career. He said, Rory, you have to be the number one investor in your own dream. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like at some point you have to be the one that says, I'm going to, I'm not going to put my money on a, on a house or a car or into someone else's business or into uh, like via a stock or angel investment. Mm -hmm. Like at some point I'm going to take my money and I'm going to place a bet on me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, I feel called to do this. And there are certain tools and assets that I need to do this. And I'm going to invest that money as a bet on who I am and what I feel called to do. And, you know, if you trust Brand Builders Group, uh, we're extending that trust to Steven's team and Brand Amplifiers because he, 
even though Brand Amplifiers technically is not a brand builders group offering, it is one of our trusted vendors. And Steven is a strategist of ours. Like he is in this all the time. Like he knows the stuff that we teach and we know him. Um, and if something goes wrong here, this is our reputation at stake too. And we care about this because we want to see this work. Um, mm -hmm. not, not so much because we love Steven, not so much because we get a small referral fee from this if you do do it, but because we know you need this to succeed, that sooner or later, you're going to have to solve this problem of photography and, and video funnels and sales videos and, and most rare and difficult of all, that speaker demo video. Mm -hmm. And we think this is a rare opportunity and a, and a very rare chance. Like I said, I don't even know when, anyone else who does do this. Um, and so we need this to work. We want this to work because we care about Steven, but, but more because we care about you and because mm -hmm. we've been there before and Steven has been there before we've experienced this, this problem, this massive frustration that I can't get new subscribers. Cause I don't have a quality video funnel. I can't mm -hmm. get conversions on my sales page because I don't have a great sales sales letter video. I, I can't get hired to speak because I don't have a demo video that shows people what I can do for them. And we're working together to try to solve this problem for mm -hmm. you in as fast as a way as possible. So, so the, the net, the net result of that question was you said, this is like two to three days. Yeah. Yeah. Give me, you know, give us, give us three days. If you need everything, go ahead and come for the week, be part of the experience, share in it. Um, you know, that way you can, you know, hopefully go home and tell your friends and family about the experience that you had, you know, but more importantly, come get what you need. Let us serve you. Let us help you. Let us help help you make you the million dollar brand that you are. Yeah, and you feel that way when you go. So, anyways, um, I hope this episode was valuable for you. I mean, just hearing Stephen's story and how you know he's become an entrepreneur and the power of clarity first, right? Like I hear that as a mm -hmm. as a consistent theme here is yes, don't start producing assets until you're clear, right? And if you're not mm -hmm. clear, come to Brand Builders Group and get clear. Then go to Stephen and produce produce these these visual assets. Um, so I, I hear that, I, you know, I hear very powerfully this idea of that you got to be a beacon of inspiration for other people because that proves to themselves that they can do it. And, um, just believing that you're worthy of a voice and then be, and then being willing to invest in your own dream. But if you are interested in this, then go to brandbuildersgroup.com forward slash brand amplifiers. It's it, there's, there's nothing, there's no credit card or anything there. You're just going to see samples of the work of the experience that we actually went through. Um, you'll see me there, our team there. You can read about it. And then if you're more interested, then you can request a call with someone on Steven's team and they will help customize. You'll, you'll customize a package for people. You'll help. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it depends on what you need. Not everybody needs a photo shoot. Not everybody needs a demo video. Not everybody needs mm -hmm. a video funnel. But those are things that you will need at some point and you might be able to knock them all at once or upgrade what you have. Yeah, or just, you know, make contact with these guys. So we'll link up to that, obviously, in the show notes, brandbuildersgroup.com slash brand amplifiers. Um, Steven, you have such a great story. We feel yeah, so thanks, lucky man. to attract people like you as clients and strategists. Again, like, you know, I, I think we pay our strategists really well and we strive to always like be able to pay them more. But, you know, clearly for you, it's it's not about the money. It's just about this desire. And this whole business of brand amplifiers basically is... Mm -hmm. I mean, not basically, it legitimately came out of a frustration, a problem you struggled to solve for yourself mm -hmm. that you said, hey, I, I, I'm in a position I can help other people solve this. Yeah, I mean, I, you know what? It, it's one of the greatest things that you guys have taught me and, and I've heard of repeatedly is if you see a problem in the world and you have the capacity to solve it, don't let a night go by until you try something. You know, yeah. and, and that's at the heart of everything we're doing. Um, a lot of the, the folks that I've worked with as a, as a strategist, um, they had the same, the same concerns, the same needs. Okay, well, I got my clarity down. Now what do I do? You know, and, and, and there in my heart and my mind as we were thinking through this thing, man, it's going to be special. I'm, I'm, I firmly believe it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. We have total confidence in you. Um, and, you know, the other thing was, is that this episode, you know, whether you're interested in doing this now or later with Steven's team or not, is just going at some point, people have to be able to sample you. Like they have to be able to see you. I call it chicken on a stick. I've been using that phrase a lot, chicken <laughs> on a stick. Cause like when you go to the whole foods or Costco or the food court, 
they give you a free piece of chicken on a stick because they know once you taste it, you're going to go, Ooh, that was awesome. I want to buy the whole, I want to buy a bag of that. We're the same way as personal brands. We're like, basically our marketing assets is just chicken on a stick. It's like, here's a chance to sample me. And if people aren't Mm -hmm. buying from you, there's a good chance. It's because you haven't, you either don't have a sample available or you haven't spent enough time and care crafting and preparing that sample in the same way that you would craft and prepare an entire meal. And, and so you need to, you need to give them a chance to sample. You need to put out something that you're proud of. You need, you need for the viewer of that video to get to, to experience a small taste of what it's like to do business with you. This is a chance to do it. Um, and, uh, whether you do it with brand amplifiers or you do it on your own, you, you need to do this at some point and, and be willing to invest in your own dream. Uh, Steven, thanks for sharing your story. So much of this, I think, emulates our story and, and so many of our values are aligned. And uh, So anyways, man, I, I hope that a few of our people will take you up on it. Uh, I, I, we're going to take you up on it again. Uh, I'm going to be investing money with y'all to, to produce my next demo video. I, I want to see what you can do at full, full strength. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, man. Uh, we just we just wish you all the best for your continued inspiration and service, dude. I I, I firmly enjoyed love or love being part of this community, and so grateful you gave me a chance to share my heart today. Thank you, man.